Hello and welcome to Saturday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic. Uh, this is actually the second video that we've done today. Um, I released a video earlier on this afternoon called An Equal Sudoku uh, An Apology because I wanted to revisit last night's video in which I tackled Christoph Seliger's wonderful, wonderful Sudoku with these uh, sort of killer Sudoku with equal parity in the boxes. And I missed a crucial trick right at the start of the puzzle that really you know, it was so integral to the intended solution path that I wanted to show you guys the trick and also to have a go at solving the puzzle in the intended in the intended way. So do check that video out. It's well worth looking at, even if I think it, even I think even if you have watched last night's video already. Um, now we're going to try something ambitious this evening. I'm going to try and solve um, this puzzle on screen, which is Prasanna Sashadri's incredible uh, 14 variant Sudoku hybrid puzzle. He calls this compounding the codependency. So uh, it's obviously got the same initials as cracking the cryptic. And we released this on Patreon about a week ago to give you guys a chance to get used to the rule set. Um, so I hope a number of you have had a chance to look at it. Um, in the editing of this video, I will try and put the rules on the right hand side of the screen, but I don't know how successful that's going to be because there are just so many rules. Um, and what I don't intend to do is to read those rules out at the start of the solve because I think it would sort of take 15 minutes of the video and it wouldn't it wouldn't add a great deal. Um, so what I, what I plan to do is to go through the rules in order and try and apply them to the grid and just see see what we can learn. Do have a go at the puzzle first. Um, Prasanna is one of the world's best Sudoku setters, full stop. He's also one of the best Sudoku solvers as well. So, um, you know, it should be well worth uh, your time. Uh, you just click on the link under the video to have a go. And with that, let us, let me see how to do it. Let's get cracking. Um, so the first thing we've got is this, all clues on the left and all clues on the right are one of the, the following. So either outside parity, which means the clue gives the first n cells of the same parity until the first cell of the other parity in that direction. Well, okay, I have no clue how to use that yet, so I'm gonna move straight on. Skyscraper, numbers represent the heights of skyscrapers. The clues outside the grid give the number of skyscrapers seen from that direction to all the skyscrapers block shorter ones. So that's well that is more at least i can see a bit of logic whichever side because there's a one on both sides of the grid one of these ones must be a skyscraper clue and therefore yeah one of these squares must be a nine that's something we could say straight away we don't know which one but one of them must be a nine because it's going to obscure every other building in its row now, I don't, well, until we develop the rule set, we're not going to be able to use that. I'm just going to highlight those squares just to keep track of the fact that we have a restriction that applies in one of them. Now let's move on. So we've got all clues on the top or all clues on the bottom are either Serbian frame or X sums. Now, Serbian frame, the clue gives the sum of the digits in the third and fourth cells in that direction. I've never seen this restriction in my life before. So, right, okay. So this 17 clue would be very powerful. If this was Serbian frame, it would mean those two squares have to be eight and nine. Other than that, we have no, no great restriction that I could understand. I mean, well, Actually, that one, look, if that if that was a nine and this was a Serbian frame, those two squares would have to be six and eight because they'd have to add to 14 without using a nine. If this, on the other hand, oh, yeah, we need to work out more, more things, I think, to really take this logic any further. X sums is the other one. So the digit in the first cell takes up the value of N where the clue outside gives the sum of the first n cells in that direction. Ah, now, okay, okay, this is important. Now, why is it important? Well, we know one of these cells is a nine. Now, let's think about what a nine means in the context of an x sums clue. 
If the nine was here and this clue was an X sums clue, what would that mean? Well, it would mean that these nine cells had to add up to 14, which they clearly don't. And there's no 45 clue here either. Obviously, one to nine adds up to uh, 45. And if the nine was associated with an X sums clue, the clue outside the grid would have to be a 45. So this is important because it means that wherever the nine goes, the Serbian frame also goes. Now, I say it's important. It's important in a sense, but we still don't know which side of the which side of the grid is the nine. We just know whichever side it is, it will go with the Serbian frame. So the other side of the grid will be outside parity going with X sums. OK, well, I don't think I don't see a way to use that. Let's move on. First box and ninth box. That's this box and this box are arrow or thermo. Well, the, the thermos and the arrows are too small to, to be useful. They're only well. The thermometer would be four cells. The sum, if it's an arrow clue, would be three cells. So I don't think we can use that yet. Second box and eighth box, we've got three difference or consecutive. OK, three difference means the white dots separating the cells. So these two cells or would have to have a difference of three, or these two cells would have to have a difference of three. And consecutive is the difference is one. So again, there's nothing we can do with that. Let's move on. Third and the seventh box, even set or odd set. Oh, but look at this. The odd set is just the numbers one, three, five, and seven in any order. So, so that's quite interesting in the sense that there is never a nine in a gray cell in this puzzle. None of these squares can be ever be a nine according to the rule set. So I don't see how to use that, even though I know one of these is a nine. But it's just an interesting thing to note. So let's move on. Fourth box and sixth box. That's this box and this box. We've got crop key. So the white dots would have a difference of one. The black dots must be in a ratio of two to one. Or XV, the white dots mean the digits on either side sum to 10, and the black dots mean the digits on either side sum to 5. Right, let's think about this one. So, ah, okay, so there is a restriction here, isn't there? Because whichever one of these is true, we have identically labeled dominoes. We've got black dots in row five. So one of these, whichever one is the XV, these will add up to five. And that means they're gonna to have to be um, one, four or two, three. And if this box, if this box was the XV, these four squares would have to be a combination of one, two, three, and four, because they, they're going to have to be a two, three, and a one, four pair. And that would mean this would be crop key and would be, well, it, no, the thing is, it could be anything. It could be four, eight with the four hiding here. It could be three, six with the three hiding here. It couldn't be one, two, I guess. That would be impossible, or two, four. OK, so I don't really understand how to use that one either. Except that there must be there must be cells summing to five in one of these two positions. I think that's what we know from that. Um, right. So if we get nothing from this box, I am going to be totally stuck because I don't see how I don't see how I've missed anything really fundamental from the first however many rules we've been through. Four, six, eight. <laughs> We've been through 12 sets of rules so far. So the fifth box is, there are two clues here. Each of them will follow one of the, all right. So we've got, a four, we've got two 14 clues in this box. One of them is a quadruple, which means the digits shown 
must appear in the 2 by 2 area of cells they are in the middle of. Ah, right, so actually whichever one of those is that's true for, it's not a 14 clue, it's a 1, 4 clue. So if it was this one, it would be saying that the 1 and the 4 have to appear in this 2 by 2 region. And the other one is a quad sum, which means the number is the sum of all four... Ah, the other one is just a sum, so it would be a 14 in that case. Um, so one of the... We have, to, we have to concentrate on this, because otherwise I don't know what to do. So... So if... Let's just let's just hypothesize. Let's say that this is this is the one for clue and this is the fourteen clue. What would that mean? Well, that would mean there would have to be a one and a four surrounding or in this two by two. So if the one was not in the center, this would have to be two, three, four, and five, because if to make fourteen in four cells without using a one, you have to use two, three, four, and five. And that would put the 4 in the middle because the 4 needs to actually be in that 2 by 2, uh, two as well. Right, right. So we do have... Yes, this is very clever. This is very clever. Look, is it because the reason it's clever is it doesn't matter which of these two clues is the 1, 4 clue and which of them is the 14 clue. The logic holds either way because, let me show you... Um, if this is the 1, 4 clue and the 1 is in the perimeter squares, or this is the 1, 4 clue and the 1 is in the perimeter squares, 4 always ends up in the middle of the grid. Now, the only other situation that could exist, whether this is the 1, 4 clue or this is the 1, 4 clue, is that the 1 is in the center of the grid. Because one of those two things must be true. The 1 is either in the center or it's not and it's hidden in one of those six squares around the perimeter. So this square becomes a 1-4 pair. And that, yes, 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 yes. This is very, very clever. Because now we know something about one of these dominoes. One of these dominoes is a 2-3 pair because it can't be a 1-4 pair anymore. I tell you what I think is clever, and obviously we've not gone very far in the solve yet, but to build a set of 14 different rules that has a linear path, and I believe this is a linear path because we have got nothing before we got to this point, and now it's so clear that this is now impacting on these dominoes. This is very, very nice construction, isn't it? So. So if this was the XV box, we'd have 2, 3 here. And now this would have to be 1, 4. And that would create a 1, 2, 3, 4 quadruple in the row. And this would be crop key. And it couldn't. That, this does not work because this cannot be a crop key clue now. Because if the ratio of these two digits to each other has to be 1 to 2... 1 and 2 isn't possible, 2 and 4 isn't possible, 3 and 6 isn't possible, and 4 and 8 isn't possible. So this is not, this is not XV, which means this is XV and this is a 2-3 pair. And this, what does white mean? White is summing to 10. So these sum to 10, so they can't be 2, 8 or 3, 7. So these are 1, 9 or 4, 6. Um... And these are crop key. Ah, now that is still useful. Because if this is in the ratio of 1 to 2, these two squares, these can't be 1 and 2 because there's a 2 here. They can't be 2 and 4. And they can't be 3 and 6. They have to be 4 and 8. So this has to be a 1, does it? And this can't be a 1 or a 4 now, so this can't be a 6 or a 9. And this square, which is also in a crop key relationship, can't be 1, 2 or 3, or 4 or 8. So this has to be a 3, 6 pair, 
and I can't put a 3 here, so that's a 6, and this is a 3. So this is a 9, and this is a 1. So there's a 1 up here. And this, these two squares are a 5, 7 pair to complete the row. And now at least we have some traction. We are making a little bit of progress. There must be a 3 down there. So let me just think about this. Um, if this if this is a seven, if this is a seven and this is a summation clue, then it would have to be these two would have to add to six. They would have to be two and four because they couldn't be one and five. But that yeah, that's a problem. That is a problem. If this is the summation clue. And that was a 2-4 pair. Then we couldn't put the 4 up here. Right, okay. So there is, there's a restriction here. I don't think we can use it. But there is a restriction. Wherever the 7 goes, whether it's here or here, it cannot be part of the summation clue. So the 7 and the 4 need to join each other in a 2-by-2 two two region. But we don't know which way around that goes. So we've got to use, we've got to see something that we've done in the central three rows is going to impact on one of the other rule sets. Um, so that can still be eight, nine, look. Two, seven, three, six. There, this one, this one, this, yes, lovely. So, we worked out one of these was a 9, and we worked out whichever one it was, it had to combine itself with the Serbian frame clue. So if this was the 9, this 14 is now telling us those two squares have got to sum to 14, so they'd have to be 6 and 8, because they can't use 5 and 9. That one can't be a 6 or an 8. Ergo, this is not a 9. The 9 is up there, and this is a Serbian. These are all Serbian frame clues at the top. These two squares have got to sum up to 13. So they have to be either 5, 8 or 6, 7. Ah, yeah, and the, as these are Serbian frames, that is an 8, 9 pair. And this... Oh, well, this is a 12 clue. These two have to sum to 12. It can't be 5 and 7, though. So these have either got to be 4 and 8 or 3 and 9. If it's 3, 9, the 3 here would push the 3 into row 3. So we get that position. And the other side of the grid, then, is going to be, what is it? Outside parity and x sums. Oh, oh well, x sums might be good with that one. Yes, x sums is good with this one. Because how do we... We've got to put a digit in here that can't be 1. So it's got to be... Let's imagine it was 3, just for the sake of exposition. That would be saying these three squares have to sum to 5. Well, it's clearly impossible. You can't make three cells sum to 5 if they've all, all got different numbers in them. So this can't be even as 3. It must be a 2, which means that these two have to sum to 5. That means that's a 3. That's not a 3. Um, and actually, this... Ah, uh, yes, this is important. Because this has to be such a big number that is it now possible that this... 14 or 1 4 clue is a summation clue. It's not possible anymore. Even if I make that 8 That has to be at least 4 that has to be at least 5 So there's no way those four squares sum to 14. They are they are breaking the bank um, So this has to be the 1 4 clue and that means that's the 4 That that means that's an 8. Oh look and the 8 9 unwind there can't be an 8 in this clue now, so there can't be a 5 in it either. Ah, 
ah yes and we can do the logic we did earlier in terms of working out where the 7 goes because the 7 can't go here now because the implication of a 7 here would be a 2, 4 here and the 4's over there so that's 7, that's 5 these sum to 6 these two therefore have to sum to 8 without using 1, 7 or 3 so 2, two 6 does work 2, 6 is still available this 2 forces it that way that gives us the 3 the 9 completes the box goodness me um, oh, the 2 here gives us a 1, 2 pair and those those squares have got to be 5, 7 and 9 to complete the box so those two squares have got to be 4 and 8 to complete the row and over here we need 5, 6 and 7 I think ah now ha hang on this clue is a skyscraper clue this is very it's again it's just perfect timing this clue is a skyscraper clue so can that be a seven it can't be a seven otherwise this clue would be a three this has to be a six there's a seven in one of those two squares because we need to go six seven eight nine that fixes the seven here Uh, so let me just think about this I've, I've now basically used all of these clues around the, the top left and the top well top left and the top of the grid haven't I I can't get any more information out of those so I need to oh maybe the dots I can use now Or maybe these clues down here. This this was parity. I really don't like the idea of using parity. I don't. I mean, knowing these are either two odds or two evens. That's what it's saying, isn't it? And then switches. Um, fifteen. Yes, the fifteen clue we can use. We know that this is an x sums clue, so this can't be a one, and it can't be a two or a three. Now it could be a 4, but it can't be a 5. Now if it's a 6, that would imply those 6 squares need to add up to 15, which is clearly impossible. That even if there wasn't a 9 here, the minimum you can make 6 cells add up to, if they're all different numbers, is 21. So this cannot be 6, this is a 4. And that means those 4 squares need to add to 15, which means these 2 squares have to add up to 9, and that's possible because with 2, 3, 4 ruled out, this has to be 1, 8. And we've got a dot thing going on. What was dots? So dots are either three difference or consecutive. Ah, yeah, okay, we can, we can get away with it. This is a 1, therefore, to make a three difference total. So this is a three difference total, and these ones up here are consecutive. This is just, it's just gorgeous, isn't it? Let's go. So these are three difference. Oh, and seven must go there just by Sudoku, look. So this is five, six, and nine. And I need these two to be three apart. So they must be six and nine. This must be five. Wow. Um, so six, nine goes there. These two, ah, these two squares are one and two. That's a relief because they are in a perfect relationship. The other thing, just to, let's just take a step back. Look how many of these clues are symmetrical. I mean, it's just beautiful. Um, even the givens outside the grid are all symmetrically set up. Now, four, five into those two squares, I think. So these squares have got to be three, six, and seven, and I need. I need these to be consecutive in this case. So this is 6, 7, this is 3. Yeah, that looks good. So this is 6, 7. 6, 7. Right, so I've now, I've now got sort of a cross shape in the grid where I've done good work in all of these 
cells here and I've really not done very much in the other four boxes. Ah, but hang on. Let's just think about the X sums implications of this clue because this can't be two or four. It can't be one. It can't be five because if it was five, those five clues would have to add to 14, which is absolutely impossible. So this, this is a three, which means one of those squares is a three. And these two squares have got to add up to 11. Ah, uh, oh, no, hang on. Now we've got this clue, maybe. So this was... So this is saying this changes parity from the three. So this square has to be even. And it can't be two or four. So this is six or eight. Oh, this is going to... Is this going to help with whether this is an arrow or a therm? This can't be an arrow. This cannot be an arrow. No, it, it just... Look, even if I make this a nine... If this is a 6, these two squares now have to be equal to 3, add to 3, but there's no 1 available. So this doesn't work. This is a thermometer. So this is an arrow. Uh, I don't know where to look here. Let's look up here. If this is an arrow and it's a 3 cell sum, it must add to at least 6, but it can't equal 6 because there's a 6 there and it can't equal 7. And it can't equal 9. This is an 8. Wow. 8 here. 8 over there. Now, as this is a 3 cell sum summing to 8, it must include a 1. It gives us 1s locked into the same rows of the grid look in uh, box 1 and box 2. So we now ask the question, where does the 1 go in row 3 of the grid? It must be in one of these three squares. Uh, so this is either 1, 3, 4 or 1, 2, 5. I don't know how to tell which at the moment, I don't think. So do I have to look down here again? So these... Ah... Ah, this is a thermometer. I've got to remember that because that means... Yes, I do have to remember that. This can't be a 2-9 way of making 11. Because if it is, this is broken, this cell. If this is a 2 and it's on a thermometer, this could be a 1, which it can't be anyway, but that would be a 0. That doesn't work. And if it's a 9, it's midway along a thermometer, which would mean that has to be bigger than 9, which it can't be. So this is not 2-9. This... It's not 3, 8. It's either 5, 6, which would be this way round. Or it's 4, 7, which would be that way round. Ah, now... Oh, this is... It's just gorgeous, isn't it, the way this is being set up? Because now, look at the options for this square. They are both of the same parity. Which means this must be even. So this is 2, 4, or 6. And this must be odd, therefore, because there's only two even squares of the same parity. So this is odd, and it can't be 5, 7, or 3. This has to be 1 or 9. And if this is 5, these two squares have to be They'd have to be 2 and 4. And they, well, they can't be 2 and 4. Yes, this is good. This is good. If this is a 5, we need to put lower numbers on the thermometer. What lower numbers are available? Well, given the 1, 3 here, the only numbers that are available are 2 and 4. And that would make both of those squares a 6. So that does not work. This is not 5. This is 7. That um, means that's not 7. This, this must be greater than 7. It's on the thermometer. That's an 8. That fixes an 8 and a 4. That's not 4 anymore. 
Neither of those can be 8, look. 8 must go in that square. Ah, ah, yes, and if the 8 is not on a grey cell, this must be, this, these must be odd. These are odd digits, and these are even, di oh, this is going to break it, I think. So we've now got odd digits here, and those odd digits are 1, 3, 5, and 7. So this, this has to be a 1 because the one cannot be off the grey digits. This is a one, that must be a three. This must be five and seven, and that's resolvable. Seven, five, seven, six. Five here means that's five, four. That fixes the sum here. We can't put two five into those squares. So this is a three, four combination. The four here means that's a four. This is a 1, 3 pair. 1, 3 pair means that's a 1, that's a 2. So look, we need a 9 in this row. It must go here. And we need those squares to be... Uh, ah, that must be a 6, because they've got to be even. These have got to be 2, 4. That places a 2 in there. These squares have got to be... 5 and 7. That looks good. That's not clashing here. It's not clashing in the box. Fives are locked into the same columns of the grid in uh, these two boxes here. So 5 must shift over into column 1 in this box. 5 here. So it must be in one of those two positions. But this, this is resolved because these have all got to be even. So the 5 must go at the very bottom of the grid. Five's in one of those two positions. We've got to be careful with the thermometer there. That can't be a nine, look, just from Sudoku. That can't be a seven. So this is a seven. The five means that's a nine. That's a five. That means that's a five. This one is a two or a four. Ah, we can't do it yet. Look, two, four pair. Ah, but in this box, we've now got 2, 4, 6, triple. So this this square must be a 1 or a 9. Now, now, I think I've used up... No, I haven't. I've still got to put even digits in here. That's going to be how I resolve this, is it? So, yes, that one can only be a 6 because there's a 2, 4 and an 8 in the row. So that's a 6, that's a 6, that's a 5, that's a 5, that's a 7. 7 must live here. These are 2, 4 and 8. 2 and 8 in this column, that's a 4. These are 2 and 8, yes, 8, 2, 2, 3, 3, 1, 8, 4. 1 must live here. That resolves the 1 and the 9. 6 and the 9 is resolved. These two squares have got to be 3 and 9, I think. That looks okay. That square is now a 2. That resolves the 2, 4 up here. The 6 and 4 are resolved. And the 2 and 1 are resolved. And that is how to do Prasanna's gorgeous puzzle. Now let me check. Yes. Okay, well this is a valid... Um, uh, a valid check in the sense all our check function checks is that the rows, columns and boxes add or contain all of the digits 1 to 9. It's a naive function. So I hope I've also fulfilled all of the 14 other conditions. Um, what a puzzle. I mean, I loved the sense in which that progressed linearly. It had a narrow solution path, even though there were 14 rules interacting. Imagine how much skill that takes not to let one of those rules interrupt the flow of the solve. It's brilliant, absolutely brilliant. I hope you enjoyed watching it and we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.